Welcome back to the second tutorial video in the series for Unit 506, which is the assignment for the CMI's Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Award Qualification. My name is Brent Warren and I'm the Training Director for CMBD. What I'm going to do just to start with before we get into Task 1 in detail is have a look at the word count chart which you can find on the inside cover of the assignment brief and also, incidentally, in the evidence booklet. The overall word count allowance for this assignment is 3,500 to 4,000 words, but if you have a look at the chart, and I'm having a look at it here, you can see that they actually break it down to task 1, task 2, task 3. Task 1, for example, 1A, you're allowed 550 words, and for task 1B, 350 words, and so on and so forth. Word count is always a challenge in CMI uh, assignments. You are allowed uh, plus or minus 10%. I don't think I've ever seen an assignment that's come far under the recommended allowance. And you need to employ one or two sort of tricks and tips and techniques to make sure that you come in somewhere round about. Excessive word count is not grounds for a failure in its own right, uh, so as long as you're not perhaps more than about 20% over, uh, things tend to be absolutely fine. One of the things you can do is cut and paste in various diagrams and charts or models which support your uh, answers. Um, they actually tell you that you can do that in the assignment brief instructions. As you work your way through the assignment brief, um, you can delete the various boxes uh, containing instructions and guidance. You can get rid of the, the word count stuff at the front. But I do recommend you leave the, the title bar and the, the, the questions and AC numbers in. Uh, it's useful for the assessor, but it's also more importantly useful for you as you're writing your assignment to remind you what you should be talking about. One further thing that we recommend that you do is, just before the title bar for 1A, um, insert a paragraph about you. A um, little bit of background, perhaps what your job role and responsibilities are, maybe a little bit about your organisation, perhaps how many people are in your team who report to you. Uh, this is not included in your word count, and in fact I actually recommend that you put brackets at the bottom, provided for context not included in word count. The purpose of this is, obviously, you'll build up a relationship with your CMBD tutor and, and they'll know what you do and where you're coming from. But should your assignment go to the CMI and be moderated or second marked, that context is extraordinarily useful for the assessor, just to kind of understand where you're coming from. OK, let's, uh, before we get into, you know, the specifics of the very first question, um, look at the assignment as a whole. We've got task one two and three and task one is really all about presenting the business case for having really good practice in equality diversity and inclusion you know what we're trying to say here is that this is stuff that we should be doing anyway irrespective of legislation or, or anything of that nature task two is all about good practice it's about managing and embedding um, the right sort of culture in your area of responsibility and task three looks at developing plans to take things further. Uh, and I think it's quite useful to kind of just remember that structure and what you should be writing about in each of the three parts of the assignment. So finally, let's get down to the nitty gritty and the specifics for task 1A. Now, when we check the word count chart, we can see that we've got 550 word allowance for this particular question. And 1A is split into two parts. We've got AC 1.1, which is to examine the impact of legislative requirements, etc. And in part two, which is AC 1.3, we've got to evaluate three organisational approaches. Now, the first thing to say here is that the assignment brief is in a different order to everything else. You might be saying, well, where has 1.2 gone? Uh, and the answer is it pops up in task 1B. Don't ask me why they do it. Don't ask me why they shuffle things around. But do everything in the order that is shown in the assessment booklet. With a 550 word allowance for a two part question, it's not rocket science to work out that we've got about 225 words for each bit. 
And you can probably start to see now why I'm saying word count is an issue, because 220-odd words is not a lot to say what you need to say. Now, the next thing to have a look at is the guidance for completion of Task 1A notes, which are in a box on the assignment brief. We've got five things we've just got to take into account. Um, first is, you know, within our account, we're writing an account or a report, we should include subheadings, uh, which, you know, by definition means we need to have a heading, and that heading should be, you know, an account on legal and organisational approaches to etc. Um, we're encouraged to base our response on our own experience of managing. So, in other words, what I said in the introduction, write about yourself, your organisation and your own experiences. Um, part three, you're not required to include reference to all legislative requirements, rather focus on the appropriate ones for you. Um, you may include good practice examples from your organisation. In other words, yes, use examples of perhaps where things have gone right or gone wrong in a previous experience. And finally, please refer to the indicative content for each assessment criteria outlined in the unit specification. That's another word for the syllabus. So we need to go and have a look at the syllabus now. Now you will see when you look at the uh, indicative content for 1.1, uh, AC 1.1, um, they mention a, a couple of reports, a piece of legislation, and you may have picked up other stuff when you did the learning journey. Uh, and it's from that list of suggestions in the indicative content that you should draw the, the kind of core of your answer. The command verb for this question is examine, and if I just check my notes here, inspect brackets something, close brackets, thoroughly in order to determine its nature or condition. So, you know, what impact does the legislation have? What effect does it have on equality, diversity and inclusion within your organisation? Moving on to the second part of the question, AC 1.3. Remember, 1.2 comes later. Uh, we've got a different command verb. We've got evaluate, and that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, consider the strengths, weaknesses, arguments for and against similarities and differences. The writer should then judge the evidence from different perspectives and make a valid conclusion or reasoned judgment. And they're also asking you to apply current research or theories to support the evaluation where applicable. Now that's a little bit more of a mouthful than the previous one which was examined. We're also, if you note in the question, asked to evaluate three approaches. So again, this is where kind of the subheadings come in. Now, when we go back and look at the syllabus, you will find that there are in, in 1.3's indicative content, there's quite a lot of different things that you could talk about as an approach. Um, for example, reviewing existing policy, uh, coaching and mentoring, access to development opportunities, uh, the role of internal communication. So the idea is to have a look at that list and pick out the three that you find easiest to deal with and provide examples for. Again, with word count, we've got 225 words. We've got three approaches to talk about. So we're going to have to be pretty brief and concise in this part. And maybe we're going to have to go a little bit over the word count here. Um, you know, you just have to see how you go. So what about this big mouthful of a word called evaluate? Well, for each of your three approaches, you need to kind of look at the pros and cons, what's good about it, what might be something that you have to be careful of. The different perspectives refers to perhaps the perspective as you as a manager. Uh, maybe you could talk about the perspective of the staff if you use this particular approach. You could even talk about the perspective of the organisation as a whole. And then at the end, you need to draw some sort of conclusion. You know, yes, this might be painful to do, but the benefits outweigh the, the, the downside type of approach. Underpinning your answer with sort of relative references, you may have come across something in the learning journey or you may have discovered something simply Googling on, on the internet. Uh, you know, a good example of getting it right or perhaps a good example of getting it wrong. You could possibly be a little bit more economical word count by describing your three approaches and their relative pros and cons and then maybe draw a conclusion at the end for all three. Um, I'm not saying that's what you should do, but you know you can come at this in a number of different ways. So having got 1A out of the way, let's have a look at 1B. And if we start to look first at the assignment brief, 
uh, we've write a concise proposal entitled the business case for equality, diversity and inclusion. And if I check the word count chart, I've got 350 words to do this in. I think a good way to approach this is to genuinely imagine that you're writing a proposal for your senior management team. You've examined all the legislation, you've examined some of the approaches that you should take. So kind of put it all together in a proposal, you know, this is what we need to do. It's not how we're going to do it. Uh, it does make a point in the guidance notes, which are very similar to 1A, but you're not required to write a business case. You're not writing a detailed, justified business case. You're writing a proposal for doing what you've discovered that you should be doing in 1A. Loads of help and suggestions in the syllabus, in the indicative content. We've got, you know, uh, referring to the benefits and advantages of commitment, uh, tangible benefits like staff retention, uh, best use of talent, uh, and so on and so forth. And again, refer back to the learning journey because they mention in here that, you know, benefit of impact proven by published research and internal data. So lots to go at there, but again, not a lot of words to play with. OK, so that kind of brings us to the end of task one. I'm going to put task two and three in separate tutorial videos, otherwise these are in danger of rivaling Harry Potter for length. Um, but I hope you found them useful and thank you for listening.